This is Pastor Mike Hoggard coming to you from Watchman Studios with another Watchman video broadcast. We are still doing the sightings series, but I think this will be, at least for now, maybe in this year, uh, will be the last of our sightings series. And I will tell you that uh, I ended up actually making more as far as video footage, uh, the, the number of hours that we spent together on this subject, more than I anticipated earlier. So everything that you get on this series is going to be like bonus footage, all right? And we've reserved, I think, the, the best uh, or maybe let's say the most controversial subject until now, and that is the subject of what used to be called flying saucers, and then they were called UFOs because flying saucers didn't really cover what people were seeing. So they called them uh, UFOs, unidentified flying objects. And then that UFO thing, that got associated with, you know, crazy people who are out looking for UFOs. And um, so anyway, so the military decided to coin another phrase, UAP, which at one time stood for unknown aerial phenomenon, and let's see if I can remember it now. They've changed, they keep changing it, okay? It's like some people who you know, take a shower or brush their teeth, they do it like at least once a month, right? So anyway, um, they've changed UAP to um, unknown abnormal phenomenon. I think it's what it is, but you, you should look it up this month and then find out next month what it means next month. But anyway, We've reserved this last time for that subject. And, you know, you're probably like me. I, I've seen quite a bit of, of movies, TV shows. This subject always fascinated me. All throughout my childhood, from the very first time, Jack Webb of Dragnet and Emergency uh, put out a show um, called uh, Project UFO. And it was based upon a movie that he produced called Project Blue Book, and it was about Project Blue Book, the Air Force's alleged bogus investigation of UFO sightings by common normal people. And um, so anyway, I started watching that when I was a kid, and I was like, this is so neat. And the fact that Jack Webb started out talking about the Bible. Every show was Ezekiel saw the wheel which points us right to Ezekiel 1. And as a young boy who was going to church, I thought, well, this is right up my, my alley here. Little did I know that what would, was a childhood curiosity would be a lifelong interest and a lifelong study and investigation into what exactly these UAPs are, UFOs, flying saucers, flying phenomenon. Maybe they came from underground. Hold on to your hats, people. And what exactly these were, and what were the entities that were flying or manipulating these particular aerial ships, aerial phenomenon, things like that? What, what purpose do they have in coming to this earth, and how can we contact them? Now, of all the movies that we've seen about uh, uh, contact with so-called aliens from other worlds, strangers, people who did not come from the earth and so on, unknown civilizations out in far-rung galaxies. Um, when it comes to that, you've probably seen that, you know, like on uh, Star Trek. In Star Trek, they use a communicator uh, or the, the thing they hold in their hand, uh, and they try to, or, the, you know, Captain Kirk will sit in his chair and he'll hail some uh, alien vessel that's moving along and they'll try to talk to it using some form of carrier wave. Same thing, I think, in Star Wars. They're using, you know, space-bound carrier waves to talk from one species of humanoid or living creature to another. Surprise, you might be surprised to know that the way that people are contacting the aliens now in the 21st century, we actually have people who totally 100% believe that they are in contact with what they call the star people. And they call them our friends, and we're going to see that. But let me show you how 
these people make a phone call to E.T. Take a look. I guess their hands are like antennas and so on. No, I don't, I don't really believe that. What are these people doing? They're practicing yoga, which if you don't know what the word means, it's a Sanskrit word that means yoke. They're tied. And the, the idea is, I'm not kidding you, look it up. The idea behind yoga is you are connecting or being yoked to a god. Brahma, Buddha, Shakti, Shiva. Name 330 million gods and you can connect to any of them that way. You're yoked together with them. Can you think of a Bible verse where it talks about being yoked? Be ye not yoked together with unbelievers. For what concord hath Christ with Belial? And so on. And so while these people, and, and let me just kind of explain the difference here. Instead of using a radio or using, you know, a telephone, a cell phone to contact them, which would require us knowing their language and they knowing our language, which is a topic of itself, the, the thing is that most people who have had some sort of interconnection with the entities that are aboard these flying chariots say that they spoke a language that they did not understand. Did you know that's in the Bible? Deuteronomy chapter 28, God promised that he would send a nation from afar, a nation from uh, beyond the earth, and it would be a nation of fierce countenance, not regarding the old or the young, a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. He didn't say eventually you would understand it. He's, God said you would not understand it. And so how do, you, how do you suppose that we contact an alien species that has traveled millions of light years to come to this planet here to bring in a golden age of, of uh, enlightenment and peace and marijuana and happiness and uh, pass the whiskey and the bong. And how, how do we expect to have those people help us with our transformation into the God people? Well, since we can't communicate with them in words, then the idea is we will communicate with them it using practices that people of ancient religions have been using now for thousands of years. We're going to allow those people to have access to our minds and we're going to communicate with them, not with words, but with thoughts. And they are going to communicate to us, not with words, but with thoughts. And these practices, and I'm going to lay out the scriptures for you, these practices are strictly forbidden by God all throughout the scriptures. So what we're going to do first, while these people make their phone call to E.T., um, we're going to go line upon line through scriptures. We're going to lay a biblical foundation for uh, what we're going to look at today. Genesis 3. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, a direct contradiction of what God said, ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened. And I want you to pay attention to that phrase. Your eyes shall be opened and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Three things that the devil promised here. The serpent. And understand this imagery of a serpent because we're going to see it again. Believe it or not, though, if you want to study the UFO phenomenon and do an honest study of it, you are going to run into a species or a race of UAP, um, UFO, 
flying saucer inhabitants that are referred to as the reptilians. Why? Because they look and they act as like serpents or lizards or dragons is one of the Bible words. So pay attention to what this serpent is doing right here. Uh, then he promises her that she won't die. We're going to see that again too. Near death experiences where people come back and they have this enlightened idea of death and life again. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened. Well, we've got two eyes, but they teach that you have a third one right here, right, right where your pineal gland is. And that that eye needs to be opened, believe it or not. Guess what creature they believe opens the third eye? The serpent. Ye shall be as gods, was the last thing he said, knowing good and evil. That's also part of this as well, and we're going to see it as we move along. I have a lot of information to give in. I'm going to try to give it to you in one video, all right? Deuteronomy chapter 18. Here is the list of things that God said, don't do these things. Now, is God just trying to rain on our parade? Is he out to destroy us having a good time? Does God not want us enlightening our mind and opening our mind up to different ideas and different thoughts? Or you may have been led to believe by some people that the, this evil patriarchal God uh, is withholding all the good stuff from humanity. And um, it's the serpent people and the reptilians and the tall whites and uh, the little grays and all the other different species that are out there. It's, it's their job to try to get them to mankind. In that sense, they're not that far away from, uh, oh, who was it that wanted to go into heaven to steal fire from the gods? And so he goes up into heaven and steals fire from Zeus and the other gods on Mount Olympus, and he brings fire now to mankind. And the gods are angry with him, and uh, so in order to punish him, they punish him for all of eternity because he dared bring something that was only for the gods, fire, and brought it down to mankind. And the gods didn't like that. Is that the way God is? Is that the way the God of the Bible is? No. God only withholds from us and tells us not to do things. It's because he's being a loving heavenly father just as a good father here on this world would teach their children don't go too far next to that hole there you might fall in don't go hanging around this lake it's there's got snakes in it uh don't don't get within too far from being able to see home that way we can reach you if we need to a good father will seek to protect his children from harm or being kidnapped or being killed, he will seek to protect his children from those things that he knows can bring them harm. And God is the same way here. God knows the devils and the entities that are behind these particular practices. And God is telling us, don't get involved with them. This is why I've been telling you all along now, don't use Ouija boards. They are absolute occult divination practices. You're going to see that here. God says, just don't do it. Deuteronomy 18.10. There should not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through fire or that useth divination. And I'll explain divination in a little bit. Or an observer of times, that's an astrologer. Or an enchanter, that is someone who uses incantations and mantras or a witch, someone who casts spells, or a charmer, someone that uses amulets and so on, or a consulter with familiar spirits, that is what we would call a medium, fortune teller, or a wizard, pretty close to someone who has a familiar spirit, or a witch, or a necromancer. And a necromancer is someone, uh, we'll put it in, um, in the terms that some of these religions use. The new age seeks after the ascended masters. Well, who are the ascended masters? They are, in many cases, people who used to live on this world, and they died, and they went to the higher ethereal plane, and they are sort of like guardians of the galaxy, 
and it's their job to pass on this great, uh, awesome wisdom to mankind and to any other species out there that, that would hear it. So these ascended masters basically are dead people, that those who practice uh, getting in contact with them, those who practice um, in the Native American religions, they honor uh, their ancestors, their forefathers. They pray to their forefathers. They say they're part of the sky gods now. Uh, one of the reasons why most Indian tribes buried their dead high up on platforms is the idea that if we put them in the ground, they won't go up to the sky. So we're going to put them up here, literally, as the, um, the ravens and the vultures and whatever animal came by to eat those people and pick the meat from those carcasses and they flew up into the heavens, those Native American tribes and First Nations believed that that's how they would achieve their trip into heaven. Okay? And God said, just, you know, stay away from it. These people are not telling you the truth. Even in Japan, you have ancestor worship. They honor their ancestors, which is what drove them partly to do what they did in World War II. They were following the, the shogun's call, as it were, all right? But anyway, these are nine things that God said don't do them. Why? Because they're linked with evil activity. They are linked with uh, the presence of demonic spirits, uh, un unclean spirits, familiar spirits. We saw the definition of that the last time. And so God says, just stay away from them. I'll, I'll be your guide. I will tell you what you, what you need to know. Call unto me and, and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things that thou knowest not. That's what God said. Jesus said, ask and it shall be given. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. So if I have my God who has promised me that if I ask him a question, he will give me an answer and it'll be the right answer. If I need something from God, I just simply have to ask and God will either give me what I ask for or something better than what I ask for. The bottom line is I know that I can go to God with my problems, with my questions, with my, the help that I need, and I will get it easily. All I have to do is call out to the name of the Lord, cry unto the Lord, the Bible says. It's that simple. Jesus said, call unto me and I will answer thee. Okay, where two or more gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. If any two of you agree is touching anything in heaven and earth, it shall be done. Whereas these jokers make you learn long hours, spend long hours training to pray the right way, quote unquote pray, to meditate the right way. And sometimes you'll get it and sometimes you won't. And God just says, Stay, I, I'm better than that anyway. I can do more than they can, and I'm just a better God all the way around. That's what I believe. Amen. Deuteronomy chapter 13, the Bible says, If there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams, and giveth thee a sign or a wonder, and the sign or the wonder come to pass, whereof he spake unto thee, saying, Let us go after other gods, which thou hast not known, and let us serve them them. Now this scene that you're looking at here is a scene from Steven Spielberg's movie, The Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Steven Spielberg had read several books on UFOs. He had read um, and was studied up on Project Blue Book. In fact, he used J. Allen Hynek, who was the uh, professor behind Project Blue Book. Uh, he used him and put a cameo of him in this scene where all the aliens are coming out of the mothership. Uh, he consulted Jacques Vallée, who has been, um, he has written several, several books, I don't know how many exactly, on the UFO phenomenon itself and how it's related to ancient practices of the occult, you know, based upon ancient religions and so on. And that's always a, a, a red flag to me. Again, if we're wanting to contact these advanced species, how come is it, since they're so advanced, that they can't just make a radio and talk to us that way? I mean, 
when people do get thoughts transmitted to their brain from these aliens, it seems like they have a good comprehension of not just our language, but almost every language on the earth. That's what a familiar spirit does. He, he knows all the languages of the people that he's been assigned to. Why couldn't they just talk to us in some form? I mean, we've already, we've already gotten to the point where we don't have to use our voices either. We can type stuff in and the computer will say it for us. Seems pretty simple. Pre seems pretty ancient as far as technology is concerned. But no, these have to be contacted via psychic abilities. In fact, the um, person in this movie, Close Encounters, Roy Neary, that is exactly how he ended up leaving his home in Indiana, driving all the way out to Wyoming to go to Devil's Tower, Wyoming. There's a reason why. I might get into that during this. And there at Devil's Tower, Wyoming, the government's there. Neary is there. You've got 12 people as part of a interplanetary exchange program. I'm not making this up. There was, a, there is a rumor on the internet that there was an exchange program. I'm not saying there was, but the fact that they picked 12 people tells me something. And here we have Neary's character and basically they are seeking after other gods because it's manifest that their technology is way beyond ours. And any advanced technology, let's say someone from America right now, going back in time to like 1880, how would you explain how this mechanism worked to someone living in 1880? Or let's say, ooh, 1630, and you're in the Plymouth, uh, plantation and those good uh, Calvinists there, if you were to go back in time with a phone like that and show it to them, they would cry, witchcraft, ye art, ye art thou having witchcraft. Okay. Anyway, got to move along. So obviously their goal is to use signs and wonders in the sky. People, when people see a UFO, they just go, some, some of them just curse nonstop. It's a sign or a wonder. But the purpose of that sign or the wonder is to get us, mankind, to go after other gods. And God says, you don't know what you're doing. Don't hang around those people. 1 Samuel 28, God warns us about familiar spirits as well. And Saul disguised himself and put on other raiment. And he went and two men with him and they came to the woman by night. And he said, I pray thee, divine unto me by the familiar spirit and bring me him up whom I shall name unto thee. Now, the definition of the word divining here in this verse, it literally means information given to you by way of psychic or familiar spirit means. In other words, rather than reading, I have my Bible open to the book of Haggai. Rather than reading with my eyes the, the book of Haggai or listening to it uh, as Alexander Scorby reads it and then reading part of Zechariah or listening to it from a sermon or whatever, rather than us getting the words of God into our mind and our heart the normal way, those who use psychic means uh, believe that they have the ability to transmit uh, entire downloads, they call it downloads in 21st century term, uh, to download into their brain whole sections of the Bible or um, diagrams of certain technology. They use this psychic power to transfer information and thoughts in a way that is not according to nature. Nature says read it or nature says hear it. But they go supernatural into a paranormal state and they are either given those thoughts and given those words and given those diagrams or whatever it is. Uh, one case that I know of, uh, the RAF Bentwaters in England, 
there in the eight, 1980s, there was a, a couple of UFOs that were flying around this nuclear storage base in England. And um, I think the colonel of the base, Colonel Charles Halt, I think he's the one that they found the saucer land, that had landed in the forest there at Rendlesham Forest. He went over there and he saw this writing on it that looked like, you know, cuneiform or hieroglyphics. And when he moved his hand, his fingers across the letters, he instantly got all of this knowledge, this information in the form of zeros and ones. And he said that thing stayed in his brain for days and weeks until finally he sat down with a pen and paper and started writing out the combination of those zeros and ones. If you know anything about computers, you know that's binary language. When he wrote the last one and the last zero, instantly that information was gone out of his brain because he had put it on paper. That is a way to get information by means of a familiar spirit. What Saul was doing here, because God would not, was not going to talk to him anymore, Saul decided to go to the other team, the other side, the devil's side, Satan, the dragon, the serpent. And so a familiar spirit came up out of the earth because the woman said, I saw gods ascending uh, out of the earth. And that familiar spirit named itself Samuel. Saul believed it was Samuel. And that quote unquote fake Samuel gave Saul information that he could not get anywhere else. That's what, is, that's what divination is all about. And this reason why I say don't use Ouija boards or any other kind of divination because you are inviting a devil, a demon, an evil spirit to take control of a part of your body, your hand or your mind or God forbid your heart. Revelation chapter 6, let's look at this. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake. And the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs, when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And then in Revelation 12, verse 3, And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. Now notice in Revelation 12 and Revelation uh, chapter 6 that there's going to come a time when the Bible says that a third of the stars that are in heaven are going to fall to the earth. Now, years ago when I was young, I didn't understand this. I thought, well, I know what stars are. Stars are like these big, you know, fireballs in, in space. And most of them are bigger than the earth. So how can a third of them fall and hit the earth? Well, then I kept reading the scripture. And then I found out that when the Bible says stars, they also mean angels. And when the Bible says angels, they also mean stars. You notice here in Revelation 6, the stars of heaven fell into the earth. In Revelation 12, it tells you how many, a third part of the stars of heaven. And then to sort of cinch our understanding of it, he says in Revelation 12, 9, the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. His angels is a reference to the third of the stars that fought with Satan against Michael and the other two thirds of the angels. And they are part of the stars that fell from heaven and landed on the earth. Jesus said that very same thing in Matthew chapter 24, that the stars of heaven are going to fall. And so we put those things together, line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little and there a little, Isaiah 28 says. Paul says, comparing spiritual things with spiritual things. And did we discern then from the scriptures that God is referring to angelic beings. And now I don't have a problem with these stars 
falling to the earth because I know what they are now. They are a third of the angelic host. And just in case you may not believe what I'm saying to you from the Word of God, I can ask you to believe the Word of God. But also, we have a clue right here in this Masonic symbol. It's the symbol of the double eagle. And you'll notice that above its head, it has a crown. And above that crown is a triangle. Remember that triangle. You're going to see it again. And it has the number 33 in it. What is a third as a decimal? 33.333333. And it goes on to infinity, right? Percent. You can never end cutting off something of a third. It, it just never ends. And then if we look below the eagle's wings, if you were to count these stars, I don't have time to do it today, there are exactly 32 stars here. The 33rd one is the eagle that you're looking at. He is the king over these stars. What are those stars? They're angels. Then why are those stars not up above the crown and the triangle? Because they've fallen. That's my guess, but that's what I think. And then the phrase ordo ab chao. Ordo means order, like a, a political order, or order in general, things lined up. And chao means chaos. But here's what's interesting. The Greek word chao is also a term used for the abyss, the bottomless pit. So the, a technical meaning of ordo ab chao means order from the pit. Where does the beast come from? Where, where do these, these locust angels come from? They come up out of the bottomless pit. Where is the devil going to spend a thousand years falling in the bottomless pit? And so we have a reference here, I believe, to this 33% of the fallen angels that fall to the earth that there is a king over them. And if you read Revelation, get this number, 9-11, I did a video on that called The Beast of 9-11. Look it up, okay? But if you look at Revelation 9-11, you find out who that king is, okay? Let's move on. Now, we've, we've laid the biblical foundation for what we're going to discuss today. Now we're going to move through the various pieces of information that I've gathered together. Pictures, quotations from books, quotations from different documentary videos that have been made. Uh, not necessarily by anti-UFO people, but by the UFO people themselves. And most of this is going to come from Dr. Stephen Greer. Uh, when I first saw him, it was on his Disclosure Project video where he marched out, uh, I don't know, 20 or 30 uh, men and women that had worked for NASA, that had worked for the intelligence community, that had worked for the military in various forms, and they were all there sharing this idea that we are being visited, not just in our country, but in our military installations. One man relates a story that how he was uh, assigned to, um, to Montana to a nuclear missile silo. He was down underground, about 30 feet underground, um, and he was manning the controls of that station. He gets a call from up top saying, uh, sir, there's a UFO out here outside the gate. He says, you want to come up and look at it? And he said, no, just keep your eye on it. He gets a call later that says, sir, this UFO now is right directly over the missile silo. What do I do? And about that time, all 10 of the missiles that were stationed there and ready to be sent off into war, all 10 of those shut down. Not just the rockets, but the computer console as well. Took them months to get everything back operating again, okay? These all came to tell their story. And I, I fell for this. I'm like, oh boy, boy, Stephen Greer's gonna be a good guy, man. He's gonna expose the whole thing. Well, then you find out what Stephen Greer is really full of, what he's made of, what he does, what his agenda is. And we're gonna start to see that agenda. Now, the, the basic topic of this is the fact that if I believe that there are alien entities um, coming to this earth that we're not sure exactly 
what agenda they have in mind. I know what Stephen Greer says. Stephen Greer says that they are um, part of the God consciousness of the universe, and they have been drawn here to help us into the golden age. He keeps saying that, the golden age. And he ref it's referring, it's like a new age term that he believes that these enlightened beings are going to come and they're going to give us their technology and they're going to show us how to heal things and then we're going to do away with war, we're going to do away with money, we're going to do away with uh, property, we're just going to uh, live our lives and be uh, transfigured is a word that he used that mankind is going to be transfigured so that he can live out among the stars and be one of the gods like the god people that keep coming to this planet. That's what, that's what Greer believes, okay? And so, and, and there are, and the idea is that if, if I believe that he saw aliens, that he saw UFOs, saw them with his own eyes, and recorded things about them, wrote it down, memorialized those interactions that he had, if I believe him, and I do to a certain extent, then there must be something that ties these entities in with what the Bible says. In other words, we're not talking about, oh, I don't know, some, some boy going out to his favorite creek one day and finding, you know, a, a stone of solid gold out there that's been laying out there since the creation. Okay, some little one item news story and, and is quickly forgotten about. We're dealing with something that literally, if it all, if it all is true, which some of it's not true, but if any of it's true, we're talking about a major event taking place here on this earth that will literally change almost everybody's perception of heaven, earth, God, the afterlife, everything will change. Which is the, the mantra spoken by those in the CIA or those in top intelligence circles. Well, we can't let the public know about this. Well, there will be rioting in the streets. Religions will fall and crash. Mine won't. Mine won't. You know why? I know the Bible and I know what they're up to. I know who they are. And so if these entities are what I believe the Bible says they are, then they are going to use what we would call psychic ability to speak to mankind, to perform certain functions like shutting off 10 missiles in a missile silo, taking people out of their rooms at night, vanishing them uh, for hours on end, bringing them back to their room. And these people know that they've got missing time. They know they've had a strange dream. They don't know what it is. These people have abilities that lie far beyond what humans can do. And I believe that once a lot of people who have um, unwilling interaction with these entities, Many of them say that now that they've had this, now that they've been on board the ship or now that the alien touched me or the alien did this to me, now I have abilities. I can see the future. I can read people's minds. I can move things with my thoughts. I can perceive things and divine things that I never used to before. I can see things with my eyes I never used to see before. A lot of people who have had contact with E.T. basically come out and say, we, we can do things now we've never been able to do before. Do I believe them? For the most part, yes, I do. Because that, those things have been exhibited and examined and tested in real life. And so uh, we look to a book here that, b written by Jacques Vallée. Uh, remember uh, Spielberg uh, used a lot of his material in writing the script for Close Encounters of the third kind. In fact, the character of Jacques Vallée shows up uh, in the movie as Mr. Claude Lacombe, played by a uh, French director, and I'm going to get his name wrong, Francois Truffaut, pardon my French, 
Uh, but Spiel, he was, Spielberg was, you know, he was one of Spielberg's idols. And Spielberg invited him to come and play in this movie, and he did. He played the character of Jacques Vallée, this French guy who's been researching aliens and UFOs all of his life. So Jacques Vallée wrote a book called UFOs, The Psychic Connection. Again, a regular conversation between us and an alien race would involve using maybe a radio, cell phone, some sort of electronic means, or just talking to them. But they don't do that. They get right into the brain of human beings. Notice what it says. A number of witnesses, for example, reported perceiving distinct messages inside their heads, a fact they interpreted as an indication of a telepathic ability on the part of the UFO occupants. Now notice how Job responds to that. Now a thing was secretly brought to me and mine ear received a little thereof in thoughts from the visions of the night when deep sleep falleth on men fear came upon me and trembling which made all my bones to shake then a spirit passed before my face the hair of my flesh stood up notice this again Jacques Vallée says and so do so does um Stephen Greer and countless others say that they now have psychic abilities now that they've made contact with these entities in various forms. Some, some meet the reptilians, some meet the little greys. Some people get to see the lady. The lady. That would be something I'll do in the future. Okay, You won't want to miss that one. You'll know who the lady is, all right? But anyway, uh, Valet is basically, he's got this whole book and he's telling people, he's telling of people who have psychic abilities now. And what do I believe psychic abilities are? Do I really believe that these people can move things with their mind? Do I really believe that these people can transfer their thoughts to another person's head or receive thoughts transferred to their head? Do I really believe that people who are psychic have the ability to tell the future? No. I don't. I don't believe the ability is on the person at all. I think the, the gateway is the person. I think uh, the actor is the person who pretends to have the psychic ability. But the ability is the devils or the spirits or the demons themselves. Take, for instance, um, um, if I say that I have the ability to move things with my mind, and so I'm going to focus... Uh, on this USB thing and I'm going to focus hard enough and lo and behold I'm going to make it move well my mind can't do that nobody's mind can do that that's ridiculous but an invisible entity can make it move and you would say how did you do that oh I have abilities what if what if you wanted to try to read somebody's thoughts do you have access to their mind no, you don't. But what kind of entity does? Well, we learned here from Job that a spirit came to Job's friend um, in the middle of the night and had access to his mind. He said, a thing was secretly brought to me uh, in the thoughts from the visions of the night. There was a spirit there with this man who had access to his thoughts and could manipulate his thoughts. And so, and read them. Oh yeah, I believe the devil can do I believe spirits can do that. They can then take from somebody's mind a thought and transfer it to your mind or somebody else. I'm not, I'm not participating. But transfer it to somebody else's mind and it would make you think that they have psychic ability. So psychokinesis, the ability to move things with your mind, um, and all the other psychic abilities for telling the future. So what if, what if you get a download one day that tomorrow uh, a big yellow vehicle um, is going to crash into a, a brick wall in the St. Louis area? And the next day, lo and behold, you hear a story on the news that a, a school bus had an accident and 
and crashed into one of those big block barriers that they have on the sides of highways now. Okay, and you would think, oh, I predicted that. I saw that happening right in my mind. I saw that happening. You know what I think? I think some devils got together and they drove a bus into a block wall. They may have even had the, the bus driver have a heart attack or something like that while that was going on, just so he would get out of the way. So I know, listen, which is easier for you to believe? That I have the ability or these people have the ability to go and move stuff with their brains? No. No. See, that stuff is only real in movies. Or is it easier for you to believe that evil spirits, unclean spirits, familiar spirits, spirits that represent the dead people or the star people can manipulate things in this world to make it look like you have psychic abilities. And in that sense, God says, see, that's why I don't want you playing with them. I don't want you messing with them because you're inviting spirits into your life that are at some point they're going to turn on you. It's sort of like in, in, this, in this area, several years ago, there was a woman and we knew about her all the way from when I was a teenager. There was a chimpanzee ranch just about three miles from where I'm sitting right now. And this lady was raising chimpanzees and she was being real nice to them, feeding them every day, treating them right, so on and so on and so on. I think they ended up hurting somebody or killing somebody. I can't remember the exact story. But those chimpanzees turned on that woman. Okay, and that's, I'm telling you, these creatures that we're dealing with are beasts. The serpent, the dragon is a beast. And it may all be nice and pretty and sweet, sort of like a, uh, uh, like a male or a female grown cheetah who captures a young, a young little fawn of a deer. They play with it forever. They play with it and bat it a little bit and play around with it and the little deer doesn't know any better. Picks it up, walks around with it, sets it down gently on the ground and then plays with it. And then next thing you know, it's ripping its head off. Okay, that's how it is in the spirit world. And so right here you have the information that along with these alien visitations, there comes psychic abilities. And now the Bible is trying to tell you exactly what's going on behind the scenes where we cannot see uh, the truth of this so-called psychic ability. Getting back to close encounters of the third kind. There was this scene here where the, the main character, Roy Neary, has a visitation from a UFO. He never has contact yet with the aliens, but they, they fly right over his truck. You see him, you know, the bright light and everything like that. And what happens is there's a little sound of like a, a, like a high-pitched humming sound. And all of a sudden now he's seeing this mountain shape in everything. You know, the, if you remember the shaving cream and the mashed potatoes and the pillows and things like that. And then he's building, you know, Devil's Tower in his living room. Runs his wife off. She thinks he's crazy and so on. But then what does he do? He goes taking off towards Devil Tower. Devil's Tower, Wyoming, and so do 11 other people, 12. And in the movie, Claude Lacombe is, is uh, trying to reach this Major Walsh here, who is in charge of the government operation at Devil's Tower, and saying, we want these people here. We need them here. They had a psychic connection the aliens planted this image in their mind of Devil's Tower, and they all came to this one spot. They had a psychic connection. There was a voice and an image telling them to come to this location. I've always said to people, if you don't believe uh, a person who says they saw a UFO, most people won't tell other people. They tell me because they know I, I believe them. But most people don't just come right out and say, I just saw a UFO. It landed very close to our backyard. Most people won't do that. They'll hush it up because they don't want to be seen as crazy by the neighbors or anything else. Believe it or not, people still lose their jobs over stuff like this. Okay? But 
if there was a case that I could present to you that to me would show absolute 100% positive truth that this planet is being visited by beings of an extraterrestrial nature, meaning they're not from this earth, or at least the surface of this earth. They're not from here. They're not, they're not part of us, part of the natural world. If I were to try to tell you any story, it would be this one right here. September 16th, 1994, the Ariel Elementary School in Zimbabwe. The teachers were having a meeting. And so all of the 100 plus children were out on the playground. And all of a sudden now, a silvery disc landed at a place they called the bush, which was right beyond the playground limits. They were all told that not to go into the bush. Well, that's where the craft landed. Two little entities came out wearing black jumpsuits. And the children described them, their movements, as if they were like floating above the ground and not really touching the ground, just kind of bounding and leaping, like, kind of like you saw the astronauts on the Apollo missions jump around like that, only they weren't touching the ground. And so out of the 100 children, 62 of these children reported that they saw the ship land, the men in the, or the little big-headed almond-shaped eyed because uh, John Mack, a Harvard, the Harvard psychiatrist at the time, he was head of the psychiatric department at Harvard University, traveled all the way over to Zimbabwe to, to research and to talk to these students. And he had them draw a picture of what they saw and almost all of them drew exactly the same picture. Silvery craft, uh, small little guys with big heads and almond-shaped eyes, black eyes. And so 62 of the children saw that, and then they saw the ship take off. Uh, some of them ran in fear while others watched as these aliens came out. Several students who made eye contact with the beings reported a downloading of images and visions of the destruction of the earth, burning of the forest, blamed on man's flirting with technology. And they're describing this as, you know, 10, 11, 12-year-old children, and they're drawing pictures. Some of them you could see were tormented by this. As John Mack was interviewing, there's a, a documentary on this called Aerial Phenomenon. And did you know that some of those children who were interviewed back in uh, 1994 on film uh, decided to come back and do this documentary film, and they're saying the same thing. No, nobody is saying we made that up when we were kids. We decided to play a trick on the teachers to get out of school, and we all made this up. Nobody. Nobody's saying that. Of the children that have grown to be adults who could be located and who would be part of this documentary, they all confirmed this. We know what happened, and it changed our lives forever. And so one of the things that's interesting about this is that it was a school that had mixed race in it. Uh, you had black uh, children and you had white children. Uh, they spoke, all spoke good English, but the black children whose uh, genealogy goes back into African history, these African children, it's the only reason why I call them that because they're native Africans, these African children believed that these aliens coming out were what's called tokoloshes. I mentioned this, mentioned this to my son and daughter-in-law. My son is from Kenya. And he said, yeah, I know what a tokolosh is. It's like a devil. The black children thought they were devils coming out. Well, guess what? I believe that's what they were. And so um, you have this situation here where when these children looked into the eyes of these devils, these aliens, they got an instant download of images into their brain of the forest burning and the seas boiling and acid in the air and all these terrible things happening to the earth because mankind is overusing technology and he's destroying the planet. That, John Mack wrote a book called Abduction. I'm going to get into it. And in his book, he said that um, out of all the 100 people that he did a, a hypnotic regression on, 
of those people, many of them, afterward, they became more sensitive to the environment and environmental causes. They were, it's like they were downloaded into their brain to think that the earth is near to be destroyed by man's own stupidity. And that they, the aliens, are trying to stop this and they're going to use human agents to get mankind to stop you know, polluting the streams and the ocean, to stop you know, burning uh, carbon-based you know, fuels and, you know, to stop depleting the ozone layer and on and on and on, all this stuff that you hear from environmentalists. Most of these people basically turn into tree huggers. And of such, then they worship a female spirit, a goddess called Gaia. Although in the Old Testament, she was called Ashtaroth. She was a goddess of fertility. But the 90, or the, excuse me, the 62 students at the aerial school I mean, I can, I can see maybe three or four of the young ones making up a story and them trying to get out of school early with it, saying, hey, we, you know, there was strange men back there in the bush and they were trying to steal us kids. Yeah, but they didn't do that. 62 of them, all 62 of them, reported the exact same thing happening. It was not a hallucination. It certainly wasn't a joke. So that leaves you with what to believe. Okay? You can believe the safe way, but you might be caught off guard as the days go by. Now even Congress is recognizing that the UAP phenomenon is real. For the first time in American history, they're saying this represents something else from beyond Earth that could be a threat, not only to our nation, but to entire, the entire planet.